Hi guys, and welcome back to another Rixton education video. Today we're looking at aggregating messages in Mule for cases where messages are arriving in a Mule flow without having first been split by a splitter router. When aggregating messages in Mule, each incoming message is expected to have a number of headers or properties that the aggregator requires to create collections. Most importantly, they will have a mule correlation group size, which is the number of messages in a group, and a mule correlation ID used to decide which group a message belongs to. When using the splitter pattern in mule, these properties are added to the split messages. Therefore, adding an aggregator pattern in some other flow will make it possible to group messages by ID automatically. However, in a scenario where messages are arriving in a mule flow without having been split by a splitter router, these properties will not be present. Today's example shows one way to go about enriching each incoming message so that messages can be aggregated based on some suitable logic. The mule flow shown here accepts messages on a VM endpoint and passes these to a singleton Java component to generate the required correlation ID for a group of messages. Next, a property is set on each message to indicate the value for mule correlation group size. This later tells mule how many messages to aggregate before sending them to the next processor as a collection. In this example, we aggregate 10 messages at a time. By passing the correlation group size as a spring property to the component, when the incoming number of messages reaches the correlation group size, the correlation group ID is reset. Okay, looking at the code for this class, as you can see, the logic that updates the correlation ID is enclosed in a synchronized block so as to avoid concurrent messages resetting the value. The collection aggregator is configured using a timeout value. This tells the aggregator how long to wait before releasing the messages aggregated in the current group. This means that if only five messages are aggregated, after 30 seconds, a collection of size 5 will be forwarded to the next processor. The fail on timeout value allows the aggregator to do this. The collection aggregator requires two other values. The message ID expression used to identify the message in the collection. We can use the auto-generated message ID for this and the correlation ID expression, which tells the aggregator which messages belong to the same group. In our scenario, we are not differentiating between group types, so we always use the current correlation ID generated by the spring bean, which is retrieved using a MEL expression. Now I will show you the test for this aggregation. The test class we are looking at here sends 1000 messages to the inbound VM endpoint and then after a short thread sleep 100 requests are made to the outbound VM endpoint collecting 10 messages at a time. The main reason for maintaining correlation group ID values is that the mule aggregator drops any messages that have the correlation group ID of a previously created group. And I'll run this example in AnyPoint Studio and test our flow. Firstly, test 100 will send only 100 messages, so we can easily confirm the output in the console. Here is the JUnit console, and as you can see, we have the green light showing test 100 has run without errors. Now looking at the console, we can see the 10 collections, each containing 10 messages, making 100 in total. 
Above here are the 10 correlation IDs output by the logger. OK, so now let's run test 1000, in which case we will send 1000 messages and watch the console this time. Here are the 100 correlation IDs, followed by 100 collections of 10 messages each. The JUnit console also confirms that the test was successful. Well, I hope that this has been useful. Be sure to check out the original blog post for more information. If you have any questions, feel free to comment here or on the blog. Stay updated with what's going on with Brixton and in the integration world. Follow us on Twitter or give us a like on Facebook. Thanks again for watching and until next time, goodbye.